welcome to the SME Tri Power Go To Inverter video. Our energy inspires the world's most important customer, our future. Here you will witness three easy steps to install SMA Sunny Tri Power Go To Inverter, an ideal PV inverter designed for decentralized system structures up to the megawatt range with a capacity of 110 kilowatts. 24 strings and 12 MPP trackers. Sunny TriPower Go2 provides high solar coverage in ground mounted PV system as well as rooftop systems. It can allow up to 150% PV overloading with a flexible string design. Follow the detailed specifications of Sunny TriPower Go2. Due to its advanced integrated features, it can flexibly adapt to various system designs and achieve the highest yield. As a key component of the energy system business, this SMA inverter enables modular expansion as per specified requirements, all coordinated from a single source. SMA Sunny TriPower Core 2 arrives in branded packaging, stretched with bands and foil. Please thoroughly inspect the packaging upon delivery. And in case you detect any kind of damage, contact the responsible shipping company immediately or if required, contact SMA. Once the securing straps have been removed, we are ready to open the box. You will find the top cover tray with accessories. Now lift the packaging box and remove the accessories tray. At this stage, ensure all accessories are as per the standard scope of supply. In case anything is missing, please contact SMA. This is an overview of the connection panel comprising the DC and AC connection area. Inverter is supported by IP66 rating and C5 corrosion class. Make a note of the following criteria as they are extremely crucial for mounting. Maintain recommended clearances to walls, inverters or objects. The inverter shouldn't be exposed to direct sunlight. All ambient conditions must be met. Do not mount the inverter in areas containing highly flammable materials or gases. Always maintain a 3000 meter height limit and maintain 20 degrees incline in case of line position. Mount the three part wall bracket using two screws and then fix it to the wall using four screws. Screw the bracket parts to the ends of the connecting rod using the cheese head screws. This will mount the mounting bracket. Now. Attach the mounting bracket to the profile rails using four hex screws. In this process, ensure the proper sequence of one spring washer, one washer and one hex nut in each case. The support surface to which the profile rails are attached should be firm and level, otherwise it could hinder servicing in the future. Lifting 94 kilos is eased due to four handling grips. And then further, locking is done using additional screws. This completes the mounting. Disconnect the AC miniature circuit breaker from all three line conductors and secure it against tree connection. Ensure that all four DC load brake switches have also been switched off. Then open the cable compartment and dismantle the AC cable. Strip the insulation of the phases and the grounding conductor by approximately 30 mm. For conductors made of aluminium, remove the oxide film, apply protective grease to it and use bimetallic OTDT lugs for aluminium cable. Loosen the four screws of the protective cover in front of the AC connection and remove it. Loosen the swivel nut of the cable gland at the bottom of the inverter. Remove the additional seal and insert the cable gland when using cables with a diameter of 47 mm or more. Now, lead the cable through the swivel nut and the cable gland into the device. In case of an optional AC sealing plate with a cable diameter of 22 mm or more, remove the additional sealing inserts and feed the four cables through one swivel nut and one cable gland each into the device. Ensure proper crimping with heat shrink tubing is done on the phase and grounding conductors. Now, hook the conductors with the ring terminal lugs as labeled and the grounding conductor onto the threads. Make sure to follow the washer sequence and then tighten the hex nut using a ratchet. Finally, tighten the swivel nut to the cable gland of the AC connection and ensure 
that the AC cable is not under tension. Ensure the PE provided is equipotential to the transformer's neutral grounding. If required, as per the local regulation, you can connect a second protective conductor as equipotential bonding. Attach the protective cover in front of the AC connection using the four screws. This completes the installation of the AC connection. In case of using a self-assembly network cable, assemble RJ45 connectors and join them to the network cable. Now remove the swivel nut from one of the cable glands for the communication cable. Then thread the swivel nut over the network cable and remove the two-hole cable support sleeve from the cable gland. Follow the requirement which is included in the scope of delivery. Now, remove the sealing plug from one of the two openings and insert the network cable. Now, press the support sleeve and cable into the cable gland and route the network cable to the RJ45 connection section. Finally, put the plug in one of the network jacks of the communication assembly. Ensure here that the network cable does not form any loops in the device and is not longer than necessary. And also, the RJ45 connector is firmly seated and there is no tension on the cable. Now, tighten the swivel nut on the cable gland. This will secure the network cable in place. To integrate the inverter into a local network, connect the other end of the network cable to the network. Now move the limiting lever back to its original position to close the cable compartment cover and finally tighten it using two screws. 12 MPP trackers with 24 string inputs along with 4 DC switches are clearly assigned to the string inputs. Here you will notice Sun Clicks connectors with SMA standard scope, field plugs and ceiling caps are provided in the accessory bag. Strip approximately 15 mm of the cable insulation. Then insert the stripped cable into the Sun Clicks connector up to the stock. While doing so, ensure that the stripped cable and the Sun Clicks connector are of the same polarity. Now press the clamping bracket down until it audibly snaps into place. You can see the standard wire inside the clamping bracket chamber. And if in case it is not visible, then it simply implies that the cable is not inserted correctly and the connector must be reassembled. To start over the process, the cable must be removed. For that, loosen the clamping bracket by inserting a screwdriver. Pry the clamping bracket open. Now remove the cable to repeat the entire process once again. Once you get the process right, push the swivel nut up to the thread and tighten it. Switch off the inverter's four DC load brake switches and measure the PV array voltage. Connect the assembled DC connectors to the inverter and ensure it is snapped properly into place. For unused DC inputs, insert the DC connectors with sealing plugs and ensure that it is securely placed. Switch on all four DC load brake switches and the AC circuit breaker. Now, if the green LED is flashing, that means the inverter is waiting for the input conditions. It would approximately take 90 seconds for the green LED to be permanently on. Once it happens, the inverter is feeding in. If the green LED is still flashing after 90 seconds, that means conditions for activating the feed-in operation are not yet met. As soon as the conditions are met, the inverter starts. If the red LED lights up, that means an event has occurred. In that case, use the event number to find out which event has occurred and if necessary, initiate countermeasures. Ensure that the inverter feeds incorrectly. Let's establish a connection to the web user interface. You can connect either through the standard inverter IP address for the direct connection via Ethernet or if the product is connected to a local network depending on the type of configuration. The new IP address will be assigned automatically by the DHCP server or manually by the user. This is the login page of the user interface. Now log in as an installer using the default password. Post login. The first step is to confirm the date and time for the inverter in the pop-up. After setting the date and time, we will notice that the status is showing uninitialized, which means the inverter is yet to be commissioned. Now, we are required to set the grid code, where we will come across a prompt saying the device is not initialized. Just confirm it and proceed further. Save the setting and again confirm. Once this is done, go back to the general information page 
where we will notice the status is showing standby. Depending upon the grid connection time setting, the status will change to start and then further, it will change to the on-grid operation. Now, the real-time active power value has changed, which indicates we have successfully commissioned the inverter. We will further discuss web user interface and demonstrate it in detail in our coming videos. Thank you.